We're in Osaka, well, for a couple hours anyway. I leave tonight, but I wanna do something really Osaka-esque before leaving, so we're gonna start by grabbing some food. Street food is the goal, and well, Dotonbori is the place for street food. There's actually one very specific street food that I've always wanted to try, so let's just, let's go this way. Also, look at this. <laughs> that, that is a deal right there. Woo! Yeah, I'd be that surprised too. And there it is, pasta and pizza. I'm just kidding, I didn't come all the way out to Osaka to grab pasta and pizza. You know what, this looks like the place right here. Boy, they stopped making it like a year ago. It's not like there's any shortage of places to eat, but you know, when you have your heart set on something. Just to give you an idea of what it was, it was like a sandwich just filled with gyoza. Here's a picture I pulled off of Google. So I guess the mission now is to find food. And while the main street was super crowded, the river seems quiet. Like, this, this is my jam. The quiet, less crowded spots of Osaka, here we come. I've been in Osaka actually for the last three days recording the 20th anniversary concert of the Yoshida Brothers. Yeah, I did shoot some of that and some of the behind the scenes that'll all be coming up as well. Look how crazy and crowded and busy it is up here versus down in the river. Look at the crowds in this show, Tengai. This just, just, nope, no thank you. I'm happily heading back down to the river. <laughs> Seriously, it's so quiet down here. Osaka cheese dogs, which look suspiciously like Korean cheese dogs. Got okonomiyaki here. Already had that during this trip. Got some guys here doing some mochitsuki. Oh. <laughs> Osaka's reputation for friendly people holds up nicely. And you know what? Here I am searching for some kind of street food. I think they were actually selling food. Why, why don't I just go grab food from them? Mm. And you can get dango anywhere, but it's really good when you know the mochi is fresh. Mm. And I, I am so far from home right now. Came out here to grab that gratuitous Osaka shot. I think there's some weird YouTube rule that you're supposed to start the video here, but no. I'm looking out at that Shotengai and still just cannot believe the number of people. Before the day ends, there's two more things that I want to do here in Osaka. Number two is go up to the Umeda Sky Building, and number one is really more about how I get there. I looked on the map and it says that it would be about 35, 40 minutes to get there by train or an hour by foot. So we're gonna do a little exploring of the city as we head there, because it wouldn't be my video if we didn't explore the city by foot a little bit. This is neat. They say that blue light helps reduce anxiety and makes people less impulsive. So if you've ever been on a Tokyo train platform, you'll notice that a lot of platforms have a bright blue light installed at the end. Albeit dark fact, those were installed to reduce instances of people jumping in front of the trains. So. Walking along the river for a while now. I feel I should probably actually hit some of the back streets. It's just such a beautiful day, it's hard not to walk alongside the river. It's just, it's nice out. For all the street food available, the restaurant spaces are not to be overlooked. Look at this here, this place. This is beautiful. This blue place has a nice little sofa and seating area up here. There's a little patio space out here. The menu is not too expensive either. Cool, all right. I always love how much you can find just by stepping off the main streets and going out of the main areas. I'm five, maybe 10 minutes away from that main shopping area. So even that street was a little too main for me, so stepping into some of the back streets. The garbage trucks like music. I really like that. Also, unlike Tokyo, pretty much every back street I have gone down so far still has like 
people everywhere. I have yet to find a quiet space. It could just be the area, but there are people everywhere. Also, I love how bare bones this parking structure is. Look at this. You gotta enjoy the simple things, right? This building here has these things right here. And someone once told me that these originated in Kyoto to stop people from standing under awnings in the rain. Humans can be so kind to each other sometimes. I'm still pretty bummed that they didn't have that gyoza sandwich. If there's one thing that Japan lacks, it's product consistency. Never fall in love with a product in Japan. Chances are the next time you go to get it, it will not be there. <laughs> it's happened to me so many times. Yay, and I can finally see the destination off there in the background. Admittedly, this has been a much longer walk than I originally expected it to be. Unlike Tokyo, Osaka doesn't have all the little hidden shrines and temples in the back streets to find, so it's a pretty, pretty chill walk overall. I needed a coffee, and desperately. Family Mart has the best coffee of all the convenience stores. Ah, oh, it's good. This building is massive, too. And of course, the beautiful blue skies have turned into overcast right before I get up there. I was kind of hoping to catch the sunset, but you roll with the punches, you get what you get. The first time I saw this building, I was like, oh, I've got to check that out. But then I realized it was in Osaka, and I was like, well, I'm, I'm probably not going to Osaka anytime soon. But here we are, so uh, let, let, let's head up. How much would it suck if we came this far and it was like closed for the day? Like a website says it's open, but I don't always trust the information I get online. Even the area around the building is actually quite nice with little gardens and ponds and stuff like that to check out. So I was in the elevator with what I can only describe as the two loudest people in Japan. So instead of that audio, here's some elevator music. Enjoy! Alright, so coming out of the elevator, I thought that it was really cloudy and just like fogged out of it. No, it's... It's the coating they have on the windows. It's made to make it look like that. It's sneaky. Well, the cool thing is that up until this point, it's completely free. You don't need to pay until you actually get up and go to go into the observatory, which means pretty much anybody can take that elevator or check out these escalators. Later experience indeed. Please take your ticket. And it seems like at the back here they have a nice little cafe in seating area. Look at that river view. And, and that. These views are nice and all that, but we still have to get up to the top and see what it looks like up there, so. It is really nice up here, and you get a 360 degree view for the most part. You can even see down to the TKP building there that has the highway running through it. We passed under there earlier. That was definitely <laughs> worth coming back up for. Look at that. It is dark up here now. There's these black lights that are kind of illuminating sparkles on the ground, but other than that, look at that. Love it. It is also considerably more crowded here at night than it is during the daytime, so. Take that into consideration if you're planning on coming out. 
seriously, there, there are a lot of people up here. Ah, oh, look at that view though. Just something about a river at night. That was a really short day. I think in eight hours might not be enough to fully enjoy Osaka. We are gonna have to come back. If there's one thing Osaka isn't, it's quiet. <laughs> in reality, this, this is very much what the area looks like right here. I don't even remember what I was gonna say. Osaka people are clearly rebels. There are trains back to Tokyo like every six or seven minutes. There are areas in Tokyo that don't get that many trains. Lots of construction in Osaka. Last time I came out to Osaka was 15 years ago and that was literally just to use it as a base so I could go out and spend some time in Kyoto. So this was actually my first time exploring Osaka. I'm Really glad that we did this. <laughs> 